To the extent that the system of production colonizes every sector of life, the modern slave is manipulated into wasting his free time in leisure activities and planned holidays. No part of his life escapes the reach of the system. Every moment of his life has been invaded. He is a full-time slave. The generalized degradation of his environment, of the air he breathes, of the food that he consumes, the stress of his working environment, his entire social condition are the origins of the new diseases befalling the modern slave. His servile standing is an ill for which there will never be a cure. Only the complete emancipation from his present condition would allow the modern slave to recover from his suffering. Western medicine knows only one way to cure the maladies of the modern day slave, mutilation. Under commercial medicine, patients are subjected to surgeries, antibiotics and chemotherapy. The origins of pain are never considered, only its consequences. For such inquiry would inevitably lead to a condemnation of the social structure in its totality. Just as the current system reduces everything in our world to mere commodities, so does it transform our bodies into such into the object of study and experimentation of the pseudo-wise men of commercial medicine and molecular biology. The masters of the world are set to patent every living thing. The complete sequencing of the DNA of the human genome is the point of departure of a new strategy bent on power. Genetic decoding serves no purpose but to considerably expand domination and control. As with many other things, our bodies no longer belong to us. The best part of the slave's life slips through his fingers, but he continues because he has always obeyed. Obedience has become second nature to him. He obeys not knowing why, simply that he must. Obey, produce and consume. Behold the triptych that rules his life. He obeys his parents, his teachers and his masters, the landlords and the merchants. He obeys the forces of law and order. He obeys all powers because he does not know any better. There is nothing that frightens him more than disobedience because it signifies risk, adventure, change. Just as a child panics when he loses sight of his parents, the modern slave feels lost without the power system that has created him. His obedience, therefore, continues. Fear has made us slaves and it keeps us in that condition. We bow before the masters of the world. We accept this life of humiliations and misery strictly out of fear. Nevertheless, we count on greater numbers as compared to the ruling class. Their strength does not come from the police. It comes from our consent. 
We justify our cowardice to the forces that oppress us with a discourse full of moralizing humanism. The rejection of revolutionary violence is anchored in the spirit of those who oppose the system while defending the values it teaches. But when power must defend its hegemony, it never hesitates to use violence. Nonetheless, there are individuals who escape mental control, but they are under surveillance. Every uprising or act of resistance is considered deviant behavior or an act of terrorism. Freedom is reserved for those who defend the commercial interests. Henceforth, the real opposition to the dominant system is totally clandestine. For its retractors, Repression is the consequence. The silence of the majority of slaves facing this repression is the result of a political and media campaign that denies the existence of this real conflict. As with all oppressed human beings throughout history, the modern slave needs mysticism and God to anesthetize the evil that torments him and the suffering that overwhelms him. But this new God to whom he gave his soul is naught but nothingness, a piece of paper, a number, that through his common consent acquires artificial value. It is in the name of this God that people work, study, fight, and sell themselves. It is for this God that man forsakes his values and is prepared to do whatever. He believes that the more money he possesses, the more free he will be from all constraints, as though ownership and freedom went hand in hand. But freedom is the asceticism that comes from self-control, from the desire and will to act, to be, not to have. One must resolve to never serve or obey under any condition. To be free, it is necessary to break with habits that no one, it seems, dare challenge. Today's slave is convinced that there is no alternative to the existing world order. He has resigned himself to this life because he believes there is no other. Herein lies the force of the present domination. Maintain the illusion that this system, which has colonized the entire world, is the end of history. It has convinced the subjugated class that this ideology is mankind's true state of nature and as such his logical condition. To dream a different world has become a crime condemned in unison by the media and all the entities of power. When in reality the criminal is he who contributes, consciously or not, to the dementia of the dominant social structure, there is no greater madness than that of the present system. <laughs> 